You're listening to the Redditch Standard Podcast because you have impeccable taste. Hi there, my name's Ross Crawford and welcome to the Redditch Standard Podcast. Today, joining us in the studio, we have Lisa Hart. Lisa, welcome to the studio. Welcome, Ross. Good to be here. Thank yeah. you. I, for, for readers who, who don't know, or I'm, I'm, I'm sure they must have seen last week's paper, Lisa's daughter, Amelia, is, you're trying to raise £81,000 for a special operation which will correct a curvature of a spine. Is that right? That's correct, Ross, yeah. So uh, it's um, a very innovative, groundbreaking surgery, but unfortunately, at the moment, it's not available on the NHS. Yeah, OK. Um, and uh, uh, also with us in the studio, we've got Harry, who Hello. wrote the story. He did indeed. <laughs> he did indeed. And, of course, Claire will be doing our, uh, our wants on and entertainment. Um, so tell me about Amelia's condition then. So um, Amelia has adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, which is an abnormal curvature of the spine. Um, it, uh, the onset of the condition happens um, when um, young children, both boys and girls, reach puberty. Um, and uh, in terms of their growth, they, when they have a growth spurt, the condition then manifests. Um, it impacts about 3% of the population, um, but it's more prevalent in young girls. Um, and we had no awareness of the condition until November last year when um, Amelia developed the condition and was diagnosed. Good. And, and, but I gather she's quite sporty as well. How has it affected her sport? Um, well, initially, I suppose the, the warning signs for us is that she was experiencing pain down the left-hand side of her uh, back uh, with a swelling which we thought was a sports related injury so she does play a lot of football um, she's um, an avid footballer both at club level and also at county level um, so we were back and forwards to the doctors initially um, on the pretense that it was a, a you know a <coughs> swelling um, in the back and, um, and took a few visits to diagnose the condition. Um, and that's when we realised that it wasn't indeed a swelling, but it was actually a rib cage prominence, um, which is one of the key characteristics of the condition. Goodness me. And so all that must have come as a bit of a shock then. That you know, It's cataclysmic, really, isn't it, Paula? Absolutely. I think... Um, one, just not knowing anything about the condition um, and trying to understand it. But there's a whole host of emotions um, when your child is diagnosed because as a parent, you kind of ask yourself lots of questions. You know, should I have done something differently? Did I miss anything? Um, and we now know that that's not the case because idiopathic means there's no root cause. So, you know, essentially nobody knows why it's happened. It's just one of those things. And, and Harry, you, you broke the story. Did, did. Do you want to tell me how, how, how you came across it? I, I, I think it was yourself that got in contact, wasn't it? I think you've just been trying to get out there as much as possible. And as you said to us earlier, um, it, it's all about starting up a campaign for her and, and getting as much publicity as possible. Um, and you've been doing that, though, haven't you? You've been doing little bits all over. Indeed. So I think um, we realised that when we identified the treatment and the fact that we needed to pay for it, um, privately, um, that we, you know, we needed to reach out and get help and support from friends, family, local community. Um, and the way that we, you know, we felt we could do that um, is just by contacting as many people in very different shapes or forms. So schools, companies, um, the local papers, um, yeah. and also um, tried to contact lots of different sports clubs and football clubs in particular um, because of obviously the link that Amelia has with the sport. I think it's about raising awareness. Our priority is obviously the condition that Amelia has. In order to have this groundbreaking treatment, it has to be done while um, the child is still growing. And with Amelia being 15, um, she's only got a small window of opportunity to have this treatment. So Two, two months, I gather. Is yes, that right? Yeah. So um, the surgeon has told us that um, we need to have the treatment before the end of the year. Um, otherwise, we miss that window for her to be able to have the treatment because it corrects the, um, the tether that's used in the procedure, corrects the spine as it grows so if that growth has stopped, then obviously the treatment doesn't work. 
And I gather the reason you're having to go private is because the NHS operation would effectively earn, end her sporting career. Is that, is that right? That's what we've been told. We've had, um, both by her original spinal consultant and we've had a second opinion, um, because of the severity of Amelia's condition, she would have to have what's called spinal fusion from virtually the top to the bottom of her back, which put, means having titanium rods put the full length of the spine. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, we've been informed that once or if that happened, um, then she wouldn't be able to have um, any kind of uh, sporting um, activity or future afterwards, which is a big factor in us, um, you know, just as parents trying to um, consider what's important in Amelia's life, which is being active and being sporty. Footballer, being a yeah, footballer. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Um, and uh, that's when we identified um, the VBT treatment. Um, and again, speaking to the specialists um, and also the prognosis of uh, people that have already had that treatment, um, you know, they come out the back of it once they've been through recovery, of course, um, and they're able to participate in sports and dance and gymnastics um, and, you know, go on to lead um, a perfectly normal life. Can you just let us know where you are with the donations at the minute, uh, at what point you are? And Yeah, so, um, again, we've had massive support um, and we'd like to say as a family a massive thank you to everybody that's donated or reached out and offered help in various shapes and forms. Um, currently, with on and offline donations on the Just Giving page, um, we're at £15,000. Um, so, um, you know, in a few short weeks, that's a massive amount of money and a step forward. We've still got a long way to go, um, but we've still got plenty of... Um, activities and events planned over the coming weeks so we have um, a fashion show on the 27th of October at the Cabri Club. Um, today for example Amelia is uh, at school and the school are organising a netball tournament. Uh, we've got race nights, um, we are at clubs shaking buckets and we're at Tesco's again the weekend um, doing bag packing. So lots of events that um, people are continuing to talk to us and to donate. So that's really great. Fantastic. Cause, yeah. So, sorry, you, you're not sitting back then and expecting the money to come in? Uh, uh, no, right absolutely mm. not. I mean, for us, it's about, you know, our responsibility as parents is to Amelia and to try and make this happen for her. Um, but unfortunately, with the, at the size of the or the expense of the surgery, um, we can't do that alone, which is why we're reaching out. But we accept um, that, you know, we need to do something and um, earn that money. Um, is kind of the way that we come at it. Well, so. What you said to me was you can no longer just sit back and do nothing, can no. you? You have to go and, and do something of what's it's going to be uh, irreversible, isn't it? Agreed. Yeah. I think um, if you have a child and you know that, that, you know that there is something out there that will make your child better, um, you know, that passion and that drive as a parent, I think, just... Um, you know, motivates you to move forward and think outside the box um, in how can I make, how can I do this? And um, sometimes you can't always do that on your own. You need the help and support of people. Um, and we've been completely overwhelmed, as I said earlier, in the amount of support that we've had, um, even from, the, you know, just reaching out to places like Morrison's, um, Bev Allington in Redditch was marvellous. Um, you know, we've had Tesco's, we've had sports companies that have um, donated free of charge football shirts with Amelia's campaign logo on. Um, you know, just really um, those acts of kindness that just all add up to us getting closer and closer um, all the time to the goal, which is to try and raise the money for Amelia's surgery. Yeah, and I gather your your husband and your son they were they were running the Birmingham half marathon. Yeah, on Sunday. Um, yeah, I'm smiling at you, Ross, because uh, <laughs> they decided to do that at quite short notice, so that um, you know to run a half marathon with Not very little fitness. plan and preparation. <laughs> everybody thought that they were a little bit crazy, um, but I think um, sheer uh, determination to do this for Amelia um, drove them on. So I'm really proud to be able to say that they both completed it um, on Sunday and we've got the sponsorship and the donations to come in from that that will be added oh, to the total as well. Yeah. 
And you also at Morrison's Redditch, I believe? Yeah, so Morrison's Redditch on Saturday um, was a fantastic experience. Um, just uh, the kind words and generosity of the customers. Um, Harry um, helped in terms of um, running Amelia's story um, in the, the, the standards uh, on the Friday. Um, and we'd taken copies down to the supermarket and were just talking to people about Amelia's story and her condition and the treatment that she needs. Um, and, yeah, we were just overwhelmed with the generosity. Um, you know, um, I think I've put it on our Just Giving page, but it was over £1,300 um, that the customers and staff kindly wow. donated, amazing which is amazing. Work, yeah, absolutely. Get there every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was just... Uh, and I think um, it's probably broken a store record as well, because speaking to Bev, um, you know, it's exceeded um, what's those kind of activities yeah. have uh, yielded previously. Yeah. That, that's Bev Allington there. Their, their community person. champion, yeah. 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 You know. She's and great. She's she great. is absolutely great. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, so there's lots going on and uh, we continue to work and strive towards the goal. And, and how's Amelia herself? How's she coping with all this? Initially, when she was diagnosed, I think it is um, very um, hard for teenagers to deal with because um, it's a condition which... Um, essentially um, is a deformity. So they have a lot of visible characteristics such as a rib hump, rib prominence, the shoulders being, um, you know, not symmetrical. Um, and, you know, when young adolescents are going through a very emotional time anyway, um, it, it kind of um, does all compound together. Uh, I think her initial approach was very much the essence of Amelia, which is, well, I can't change it and I just need to get on with things. And she was really passionate about it, not stopping her doing what she wanted to do, which is obviously football. Um, but equally, she wanted to be really private about it. So she didn't really want too many people to know about it. And we had to respect her choices at that stage. Yeah. When we found out in July that she needed surgery um, and we explored the options um, identifying the treatment uh, that we need to pay privately for. Uh, we obviously had to talk to Amelia about that because um, the only way that we were going to be able to raise that kind of money was um, to go into the public domain to raise awareness about it. Um, and um, I think she acknowledged that she would need to do that. And, um, you know, with her permission, that's why we've been able to talk about it quite openly. I think Amelia has a couple of drivers in opening up about it. One is, obviously, our priority is to raise the funds we need for her treatment. But I think she wanted people to know more about scoliosis. So, for example, she's uh, produced a leaflet at school um, which tells people what scoliosis is and how you can um, recognise it or diagnose it. Um, and we've also um, have a petition on the Parliament website um, because we want to ensure that hopefully people walking in our shoes in the future don't have to go through, you know, trying to raise the funds for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so again, it would appeal to your um, audience and to just there is that um, petition out there. Um, and we're trying to um, lobby the government to even start talking about VBT mm. and making it available free on the NHS. It's important to note as well, people can talk about Amelia's campaign on social media as well, can't they, by using the hashtag Amelia Kicks Her Curves? Yeah, Is indeed. Right? Yeah. Um, I think that's quite important as well because obviously you want to get that out there as, as much as you can. Yeah, um, it's just getting people talking about scoliosis um, and also the fact that, you know, the more people that are talking about it and there's a lot of passion around many of the people that, um, you know, have donated or we've spoken to at the different events is, you know, why isn't this available on the NHS? Yeah. And, and just to let people, let people know, how can they donate? Um, well, Amelia has a Just Giving page. So if you visit her Just Giving page and type in Amelia Kicks Her Curves, um, her page um, will come up so, and yeah. it's available there. And this parliamentary petition, how do, you, how do you access that? Again, through Amelia's page on Just Giving, there's a hyperlink which takes you directly to the government website. OK. Lisa, I know you've got to get on to get, get to work, um, but it's been fascinating listening to you and... 
my goodness, we've got two months to raise £81,000 for this operation to save Amelia's footballing career, her sporting career. Really, it's the quality of her life we're talking about here, isn't it? It is. I think it's it's not just about her being um, active and sporty. Essentially, the condition itself does compress the lungs, uh, which is happening in Amelia's case. So that ultimately affects their breathing. So because of the severity of her curves, um, I mean, fundamentally, it's about preserving her lungs um, and making sure we correct the curvature. Um, to put that right. Um, and what we also need to remember that with the severity of scoliosis, um, the patients do have severe pain. So again, another advantage of this treatment will be hopefully a pain-free future for Amelia as well. OK, you heard it here, listeners. We've got to go out there. We've got to raise some money, get Amelia's operation done and give this young lady a bright future. Lisa, thanks for coming into the studio. I know you've got to go to work. Um, Harry's going to stay behind. We're going to chat about some news. But first of all, we're going to cut to Claire, who's going to tell us all about what's happening in Redditch this weekend. Over to you, Claire. For all the things to do and see this week, it's Claire Bullivant with this week's What's On Gate. Thanks, Ross. Loads going on at the moment in and around Redditch. And here are a few of our top picks for you this week. Starting off on Saturday, the 19th of October, it's finally here. The Redditch Rethinks Rubbish Expo. It's all happening at Redditch Town Hall. And we've had them on the podcast a few times now. And also we've written about them in the paper several times. They're an amazing team of people and they are quite literally changing our world. It's all being driven by Redditch One World Link. And it all started when they made a shock discovery on the beaches of our twin town in Tanzania. That's Africa, Tanzania, and our twin town there is Matwara. It was covered in rubbish that had travelled over to the beach from Europe, apparently. It really upset them, so they set up this amazing initiative and now the Redditch Rethinks Rubbish Expo 2019 is happening on Saturday at our town hall. The venue has been donated free of charge by our wonderful mayor Roger Bennett and it's going to be having Dr Alan Dixon from the Institute of Science and the Environment at the University of Worcester. He's going to be the keynote speaker for the day. There's also going to be a reclaimed fashion show, speeches by school pupils, market stalls, exhibitors offering tips on recycling, concert performances. It's all going to be going on. There's also a photography competition on the topic of sustainability, a recycling challenge and a direct link via Skype with the town of Mutwara in Tanzania. So do get involved, do get yourself down to the town hall on Saturday and let's all do our bit to make this world a little cleaner and a better place for us all. It all starts at 10am and will be going on until 4pm. Also on Saturday, it's the wonderful Ulster Food Festival. There's nothing better, is there, than putting out the bunting, closing the high street to traffic and having a ball while eating and drinking lots, right? It's a real British amazing thing to do. Local shops will be contributing, the cafes will be on the pavements, pubs will be thronged and exhibitors will be giving it their all. I've been before to previous years and it's always a fantastic day and almost everything on offer is going to be local. So that's really important in this day and age. The event takes place on Ulster High Street, also Church Street and Henley Street. And there's going to be such a fabulous range of food and drink. It's going to be great fun. You can find all the details on their website, which is ulsterfoodfestival.org.uk. Then on Saturday night, loads of great live music going on all over the place. Here are a couple of my top picks. The Bee Gees Fever is going down at the Palace Theatre at 7.30pm on Saturday night there. Nicholson is performing at the Winnie Eights Bar and Grill in Redditch on Saturday night. And the Revolvers, I keep hearing amazing things about these guys. They play music from the Arctic Monkeys, U2, the Beatles, Kings of Leon, Green Day Queen, all my favourite bands. Apparently they're truly incredible, so do check them out. They're going to be at the Oust House in Redditch on Saturday night. 
Then moving on to Sunday, the 20th of October, there's a wedding fair happening at the Abbey Hotel in Redditch, 11am until 3pm there. It's free entry, but if you register beforehand, you get a free goodie bag. So do contact the Abbey Hotel before you arrive about that or look for the details in this week's Reddit Standard. It's going to be great. These events are always brilliant if you're getting married. It gives you some great ideas and you also get to meet local suppliers, etc. So do check it out. That's 11am until 3 p.m. at the Abbey Hotel in Redditch. Then on Sunday evening, a couple of quick picks for you. The Bonnie Lou duo, who I've heard great things about, will be putting on a live performance at Alestones in Redditch. And of course, it wouldn't be Sunday night, would it, without Alan's charity quiz night. All happening there at the Bell Inn in Aswa Bank. 9 p.m. start for that. Then a couple of events I highly recommend for next week. The first is on Wednesday, the 23rd of October, and it's Thunder Unplugged and Unscripted happening at the Palace. This is an intimate evening with Danny and Jake. They usually headline arenas and festivals around the world. But this year, the British rock band Thunder are celebrating their 30th anniversary with a series of these up and close and personal shows for for fans, basically. It's going to be Danny Bowes, who's the singer, and Luke Morley. And they're going to be talking you through the highs and lows of life in one of Britain's most popular rock bands. And they'll punctuate their unscripted conversation with host Mick Wall. He's going to be there and they'll be playing acoustic versions of fan favourites. It's going to be a great show. Get your tickets from the Palace. And then my next pick is on Thursday the 24th and it's Only Fools and Boise happening at the Palace Theatre. Yes, it's an intimate evening with John Chalice, one of the nation's greatest comedy actors ever, best known as Boise in Only Fools and Horses. And this is going to be his one-off show and he's going to be revealing all the secrets from the set with stories and anecdotes from his dazzling career. Hopefully he'll be spelling, spilling the beans about Delroy and Rodney. And he's also apparently going to be recalling tales from his time in Doctor Who, Coronation Street and other TV classics. So it's going to be a great night. Do get your tickets. I hear they're going very quickly. 7.30pm start on Thursday the 24th. And that's it for this week. Remember, if you have an event going on, do let us know so we can let everyone know. Back to you, Ross. Thanks, St. Clair. Lots going on in Redditch. Once again, it's such a busy town for entertainment. There's so much going on in town. Harry, I, I know you've hung around because we've got to talk about some news, but yeah. Lisa's story and, and Amelia, it's... Uh, incredible. Well, it's isn't incredible, it? isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really fascinating stuff. I mean, she's such a brave woman, such a brave family, such a brave girl. Yeah, we've got to raise this money, haven't we? We have, we have. Only two months to do it. Yeah, it's 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 quality of life, isn't it? You know, this is this is this teenager's entire future right in front of us. It's amazing. It's just such an unusual condition, isn't it? I mean, we've seen the X-ray of the spine. It's in an S shape. It's just, it's it's just bizarre, really. It's really unfortunate for yeah. her. So we need the people of Redditch and all our listeners everywhere to rally round and help Amelia and help Lisa and her husband Carl. Moving on to, well. Plenty of news in Redditch, as ever, although this news was in Bromsgrove because on Monday night, Bromsgrove planners, for some bizarre reason, let me just say, passed a planning application mm-hmm. which will, an outline planning application, I should say, which is it's going to lead to the construction of 2,560 homes. In Webb Heath. At land just off Webb Heath, yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's mind-boggling. And the, the mind-bogglingly... Sh- that's a terrible word. The, <laughs> the worst part of this is that Redditch doesn't even need the homes because they've recalculated Redditch's homes requirement, and it, it's almost half of what they thought the town was going to need. Right. And Bromsgrove has still gone ahead and, and approved this planning application. Well, what, how, many did, how many houses are needed? Well, the, the, originally, back in... Uh, 2015, 16, whatever, um, Redditch was expected to require the construction of 330-odd houses a year to meet its its population increase. Um, since then, the Office of National Statistics have recalculated um, Redditch's requirement and brought it down to 181. So it's, it's almost halved. That's right, yeah. Uh, in, there's been a planning inquiry, it's a hugely controversial site, this, which is just off Webb Heath, but it sits in Bromsgrove District, and there's a big planning inquiry into it. 
um, because it formed part of uh, the Redditch Local Plan 4. And oh, it was approved by the inspector, even though at the time, well, at the time, Redditch still had a high housing requirement. Since that approval, housing requirement is almost halved. And, and what are Redditch councillors saying about this? Well, I, I spoke to Councillor Matt Dormer, the leader of Redditch Borough Council, last week. I mean, he's he's been opposed to it ever since uh, day one. It's it's mm-hmm. worth pointing out that he's in fact the Webheath Ward councillor, um, so he's been against it. Mm-hmm. Um, councillor Robin Lunn, who's Labour, on the other side of the political spectrum, you might think, he's against it. He spoke against it on Monday night, and the poor people of Bentley. Stuck between Bromsgrove and Redditch, they're going to have they're going to have it on their doorstep. More houses, <laughs> more houses. More houses. <laughs> and, and the thing about it is, we don't need we the don't houses. Even need the houses. <laughs> <laughs> so, who's going to buy them? I don't know. I don't know. But it's oh, it's one of these things that uh, you know, the law is an ass. Planning yeah. regulations are an ass. And from from what you, you were telling me, they're proposing to use Fox Lydiate Lane as access for the for the homes. Well, no, that's right. For is the first right? two hundred homes, they're going to two hundred. Fox Lydiate Lane is is as it says, it's a lane, and there's going to be dumper trucks and wagons and diggers, etc., going up Fox Lydiate Lane. Which on the left hand side, there's some there's some lovely houses looking out over, you know, what are green fields at the moment. But they're going to have their view obliterated. And, OK, it's not all about views, but, mm. you know, the lane is totally unsuitable. And then once they've got those 200 in, they're then going to block off the right-hand turn onto the Bromsgrove Highway from Birchfield Road so that anyone wanting to go to Bromsgrove from Birchfield Road is going to have to turn left, go over the bridge to the other side, go around the island, come back again, and then get on it that way. It's It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Right it's a, it's nightmare a, waiting to happen. It's a nightmare <laughs> waiting to happen. And on top of that, there's going to be huge traffic repercussions with up to 7,000 extra cars hitting the Redditch Road network. So good old Bromsgrove. Three cheers for Bromsgrove. <laughs> hip, hip. <laughs> Moving on, uh, I, was at, uh, I was at a meeting last night where, um, in fact, it was a plan, it was Studley Parish Council, and it was absolutely chock a block, standing room only. Because if you recall uh, from the paper, there were plans. Redditch Borough Council has approved plans to demolish a railway bridge over Green Lane. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Um, and people are kicking up a stink. And they're kicking up a stink because this bridge, although it's responsibility of Redditch, actually sits in Warwickshire and is part of Studley Parish Council. Now, Redditch Borough Council, when they decided, when they took this decision to demolish the bridge, they didn't tell anyone, they didn't tell Warwickshire that we're going to demolish a bridge in your patch. They just made the decision they just the made, they did, <laughs> when they approved. They didn't tell Studley. Yeah, no. They didn't even tell the local district, Stratford District Council. They didn't tell them. They didn't tell the, the locals, the, the people uh, living nearby. They just of arbitrarily taking this decision to demolish the bridge. And what were people saying? Residents? Well, there were a few. I mean, the, the, the thing is that Green Lane, which is this old railway bridge, I mean, it carries a footpath and cycleway mm-hmm. and uh, over Green Lane. And Green Lane is a rat run. And Redditch want to demolish the bridge, straighten the road. So there's, there's a number of fears here that uh, Redditch plan to demolish the bridge, straighten the road, and then take the footpath, the cycle path, across the road at road level and just put a little couple of traffic refuges in the middle. That immediately puts users of that path into direct conflict with traffic on that road. Also, by um, straightening the road, it makes it the ideal cut-through for uh, Eastern Gateway juggernauts to go up and down there. So there's a lot of angry people. And as one of them said, you know, the safest way to cross a road is a bridge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, councillors were, were trying to say that the bridge was unsafe, but we, we don't know whether or not that's particularly that true, do we? Is there any evidence of that? I don't, I don't well, know if there is. Well, well, it turns out that the, the Stratford District Councillor for that area has spent a lifetime in the building trade. He went and took a look at it. 
And he said, yeah, it needs a bit of cosmetic work. Got you. But the thing is absolutely rock solid. Cyclists going over every day, people walking. Well, it's absolutely it, fine. Yeah, so absolutely it's a busy, fine. It's a busy bridge, isn't it? Especially it it the, is, the yeah. And, and, and it's built to take locomotives. Mm. And it's, it's a fairly strong structure. Yeah. Hmm. Very interesting. <laughs> interesting then. times we live in. Interesting times. Uh, on a happier note, though, you've been talking to Amanda Watkin from uh, the Rotary Club, Kingfisher Rotary Club of Redditch, yeah. about their world record attempt. In fact, and it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, what we've got to understand is that it, it, they have broke the record, but it's not an official record yet because... Well, what, what's this record? Uh, so, the, so the record is they've managed to plant over 12,000 bulbs in Arrow Valley uh, Park and, um, and they've done it with it under one hour. It was, with, it was 47 minutes. These are crocuses the we're talking about, yeah. not light bulbs. Yeah, <laughs> not light bulbs. Um, and I think there was there was about 100 people there, and they all just got their hands dirty and got down and did it. And as I said, they did it in 47 minutes. From my understanding, it wasn't actually a record set previously. They've set a, a new record, but it's a record on its own. But I think... Um, um, Guinness Book of Records told them that you need to plant over 5,000 to even get going. But yeah, they did it, and uh, in a few weeks' time, it'll, I'm sure it'll be an official record. Cause the significance of the crocus, the purple crocus, is that, of course, that it uh, it's the marker, the dye marker for... Uh, purple is the dye marker for polio, uh, people who've been inoculated against polio. And they've been campaigning, haven't they, to, to eradicate it? For years, it. Yeah. yeah. With Bill Gates of Windows Frame. Yeah. Frame. Windows Fame. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, from from what I was being told, there was families there, um, people of all ages, uh, one, one child as young as six or seven. So it was a real community feel, and uh, it's great that we've got that record in Redditch. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. It is. And it's, it's at Arrow Valley Park. It is. And come the spring... There's going to be a field of crocuses there. There will be, yeah. Be absolutely stunning, I imagine. <laughs> we'll have to get down there. You'll have to get down there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will do. Come the spring. Yeah. Oh, well, it, it, it's, it's a high note to end on, mm. isn't it? Um, good old... Well uh, done, good Redditch. Old, yeah, well, well done, done the Redditch. people of Redditch. What a fantastic time we live in and work in. Um, I think that's just about all there is from us this week. I'm looking at Claire. Claire's making that... Uh, that mark across Time to go. <laughs> <laughs> giving us the, the thumbs down. So uh, thanks, uh, thanks for coming in, Harry. Thanks Thank too, of course, for Lisa. And uh, come on, let's raise some money for Amelia. And thanks too for, to Claire for uh, telling us all about our, our entertainment. My name's Ross Crawford. You've been listening to the Redditch Standard Podcast. You can contact me at uh, ross.crawford at bulletinmedia.com. You can contact Harry at harry.leach. That's L-E-A-C-H at bulletinmedia.com. You can also contact us at editor at redditchstandard.co.uk. Look out for all your news at www.redditchstandard.co.uk. And you can call us on 01527 588 697. Thanks for listening. See you next week. (laughs) 